and welcome to The Pig Edge, Chagas' new podcast with me, Amy Quinn. This podcast series will focus on the latest news, information and advice to keep Irish pig farmers up to date with the industry. For our first number of episodes, we will be highlighting some of the research being carried out in the pig development department. And my guest this week is Chagas researcher Padder Lawler, who's going to discuss the wet feed project, which is near completion. I first asked Padder to tell us a little about the wet feed project and its main objectives. Well, I suppose wet feed, it, first of all, is, is a Chagas core funded project and it commenced in uh, Moore Park in 2016. It's going to finish this year in October of this year, uh, 2020. It focuses on liquid feeding for finisher pigs. And I suppose if you wanted to give it one overall uh, main objective, it was to inform farmers uh, as to the choice of feeding system that they should install on, on their on, on Irish pig units and to establish guidelines if they were liquid feeding uh, for those type of systems. So at the offset, we conducted a survey and collected feed samples from, from liquid feeding systems on, on a sample of Irish farms. And following up from that, we conducted a number of experiments in Moore Park. Um, and those experiments looked at water to meal ratios to maximize growth rate and carcass quality and optimize feed efficiency. And we also looked at improving uh, the feed hygiene. And the feed hygiene is a big issue with regard to, to liquid feeding. Um, and, and looking at the hygiene, we looked at fermentation, deliberate fermentation of the whole diet, or uh, fermenting only the cereal component of the diet. Um, and we can talk a little bit about that later. But we also looked at organic acids as a way of improving feed hygiene and trying to prevent fermentation uh, in, in the, in the uh, feed systems. And then we compared liquid feeding with dry feeding and, and wet dry feeding. So we put meal and pellet diets through each one of those uh, feed delivery systems. And I, I suppose that's where we're at with regard to the project. The, the wet feed project formed the basis for Fiona O'Mara's PhD program. And Fiona is now working within the, the feed industry in Ireland. And why do you feel a specific project on liquid feeding was needed? Well, I suppose it's it's um, it's important. There's a lot of uh, liquid feeding systems out there. Computerized liquid feeding systems are taught uh, you, to be labor saving because they automatically deliver feed to troughs and they're computerized in terms of their control. However, the management of those type of systems, of, of liquid feed, feed systems, must be very, very high to ensure their optimum use. And it's evident that many producers out there are still doing things maybe that they shouldn't be doing. They're feeding excessive water to meal ratios, uh, particularly with some of the older installations. And they might have to do that because pumps aren't uh, capable of, of pumping around a more viscous uh, uh, type material and they have to water it down because maybe there's too many bends on, on the pipelines, etc. But all of that is impacting on the feed efficiency of the pigs and it's increasing the volume of the manure produced. If you think about it, every half uh, um, pint o, pint 0.5 increase in water to meal ratio is increasing uh, the, the manure volume produced uh, by a, a pig per week by about 10 litres. So 10 litres per pig per week, just as a result of increasing water to meal ratio by 0.5. In addition, some of the, the, the units out there, you know, what, what, what's been done, there's variations in, in the feeding curves that are being used, the system hygiene, whether the, the system is being washed or sanitized at all or not, the number and timing of meals or splits that uh, are delivered in a 24 hour period. All of those are, you know, there's no firm guidelines on those as such on Irish units. And these things also can have a, a major impact on the growth and the feed efficiency of the, uh, of the pig. And in 2015, we installed a, a, a state-of-the-art liquid feeding system in Moore Park. And I suppose we thought it was opportune then at that time to use that facility to establish guidelines for producers on, on the optimum uh, um, management of liquid feeding systems. We concentrated on optimizing water to meal ratios, system, system hygiene, as I said before, and comparing uh, liquid feeding to other dry feeding systems. 
And I suppose the latter thing was, is very important, or I would see it as being very important, that comparison of the liquid feed with other options that are there. It's very relevant to producers when decisions are being made on the choice of feeding uh, system to install. You might have people that are considering refurbishing units currently, or, or you know, maybe sometime in the future, somebody is building a new unit and they need information as to uh, the type of feeding system to install. Let's first just touch on the practice of liquid feeding before we move on to the findings of the project itself. Why is liquid feeding so prevalent in Ireland? Well, you're dead right, Amy. Up to 70% and maybe more of, of Irish pigs are liquid fed. And I suppose if you if you want to, to look back at the history of, of, of that or why that's the case, like there's probably only one other country that has uh, uh, um, as high a, um, a number uh, or percentage of, of, of pigs being liquid fed, and that's probably um, uh, the Dutch or in, in, in Netherlands. Um, well, in Ireland, many of the systems were installed uh, at a time when there was an abundant supply of cheap liquid byproducts from the dairy processing sector. You're talking about things like liquid whey and skim milk that was abundantly available and you know talk about 20 years ago um, I, I remember um, tanks underground tanks full of, of skim milk being fed to pigs and these were very valuable byproducts or we uh, today we would call them co-products liquid co-products because they can substitute in the diet for more expensive feed ingredients to cheapen your diets and reduce your feed cost per kilo dead weight I suppose things have changed to a certain extent that these cheap byproducts from the dairy industry, they're not available to the same extent, and they're certainly not available to the same consistency in, in, in terms of quality as they were before. Uh, you know, you take, for instance, whey, liquid whey. Uh, it, you know, 20 years ago, liquid whey was in fact liquid whey. Now, you have uh, the processors are removing the lactose from the whey, they're removing the whey proteins. So all that you're left with in lots of cases is, is salt and water. So it's a very little nutritional value. So I suppose what has happened is that uh, people now are using the liquid feed systems. They're just simply mixing uh, feed with water. And uh, you know, on a home mixing unit, you would, that has a, has a liquid feed system, you, you're using the liquid feed system to mix ingredients to form a diet in, in the mixing tank and that's fed directly out to the pigs. So there are advantages there for people that are home compounding in that you can mix your ingredients and form a diet within the mixing tank. <clears throat> but now you have some of the dry feeding systems, you know, in, in, in the last 10, 15 years, uh, some of the dry feeding systems are also have that sort of capability. So, you know, uh, liquid feeding probably doesn't have the monopoly on that at the moment. I suppose what I would say, Amy, is the real benefit to liquid feeding, you know, if you have a li liquid feeding on your units, is that you have the flexibility and the ability to utilize cheap liquid byproducts when they become available. And you use those to reduce your feed cost uh, per kilo of dead weight. And in recent years, there has been some increase in supply of some of the liquid byproducts, not from the dairy industry anymore, but uh, from a growing distillery and brewing sector. And liquid byproducts such as pot ale syrup now are being used by some producers uh, to cheapen their diets uh, or to substitute for more expensive ingredients. What do you feel are some of the other advantages and disadvantages of liquid feeding? Well, you could go on. Uh, advantages and you could go on on this for for a long time maybe but I suppose if we were to list them out advantages uh, I suppose accuracy of feeding some people would say that because you're you're you have increased volume per pen going out there that the accuracy of feeding is, is greater and you have an ability ability to to feed more appropriate uh, feeding curves to your your pigs so that would be one advantage also, another one would be increased dry matter uh, intake in your pigs, which translates into improved growth rate in your pigs. We would be seeing that consistently in trials in Park that you get very high growth rates uh, from pigs that are liquid fed. 
So that would be an advantage ability to use the liquid core products to cheapen diets. We've, we've mentioned that. Um, I suppose also, which probably is important, is reduction in dust during the handling and the feeding of, of the, the diet. Gives a healthier atmosphere for both the stock person and uh, the pigs. And you also have less labor required when you're liquid feeding at, you know, at the time of feeding, uh, in, 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 in any case with liquid feeding. And I suppose you can feed different diets to different pens so that liquid feeding allows you, if you wanted to phase feed, so that there could be a number of diets introduced to your grow finisher pigs, for instance. And I suppose finally, you know, it's with home mixers that you have these liquid feed systems. And uh, we talked about it. It has the facility to mix ingredients to form a diet just prior to feeding. So it gives flexibility to those home mixers to feed out and, and mix their diets. Disadvantage would be, and the biggest one I see is, you know, our farmers think they're feeding fresh liquid feed. In fact, they're not. What's happening is you're getting uncontrolled fermentation occurring in pipelines and troughs. This is where you get a, a growth in, in bacteria and yeasts uh, and, and uh, you know, you get yeast blooms, you get the formation of biogenic amines, which are toxic compounds. And this growth in, in bacteria in particular um, destroys some of the synthetic amino acids that are added to the diet. You're talking about, you know, things like lysine HCL that is added to the balancer fraction of your diet. It's utilized by the, the microbes so that the, the lysine is no longer available uh, for use by the pig. So you end up with a a nutritionally um, um, inferior diet than you started with. So that uncontrolled fermentation is occurring on, on most units. The other thing with um, wet feeding, a disadvantage would be increased slurry volumes. And I mentioned that, like every 0.5 uh, increase in, in, in um, water to feed ratio increases your production of manure by uh, 10 liters per pig per week. And some of our producers are feeding excessively high water to feed ratios. With, with liquid feeding, you also have wetter pens, uh, and that can be seen as a disadvantage. Now, some of the advantages I mentioned earlier for, for liquid feeding are probably negated in, in, in recent times because a lot of the dry uh, feeding systems now are, uh, more, are, are also labor saving. Uh, they're accurate and they allow for phase feeding and they can be used to mix ingredients to form a diet um, just prior to feeding uh, if, if you're a home compounder. So some of the advantages of, of, uh, uh, of, of wet feeding aren't uh, there that were there maybe 15, 20 years ago. Another disadvantage um, would be, and you, you would see this, Amy, uh, uh, out on units, is aggression at troughs around feeding time. And you get a little bit of this on, on the long troughs, but particularly on the short troughs, where you have ad libitum feeding. Every time there is a feed delivered to a trough, there's a mad rush to the trough, and there's a, a chance of pigs getting injured uh, at, at feeding time. So there would be the advantages and disadvantages, at least as I would see them. And would you see any other issues or problems associated with liquid feeding, or are they the main ones? Um, well, I suppose, although it... <coughs> as a higher feed dry matter intake than, than uh, dry feeding. Feed conversion efficiency is poorer uh, with liquid feed. We consistently see that in more part. If we compare uh, liquid fed with uh, dry fed pigs, or, or dry fed pigs are maybe doing a, a feed efficiency of 2.25, uh, our, our, um, our liquid fed pigs are somewhere around 2.45. So you're losing about 0.2 of a, uh, an FCE unit. And that suggests to me that feed is being wasted. That's not, uh, um, it, doesn't, uh, it, it, it doesn't take a, a nuclear uh, chemist to, to uh, figure that one out, but feed has been wasted somewhere in the feeding process. And, you know, some of this is physical wastage. Uh, it's things like uh, pigs pulling out feed with their heads, uh, with their feet out of troughs. 
And that can be avoided maybe by good or better trough design in, in putting in good trough dividers that can reduce that physical wastage. Now back to the project itself. Um, the wet feed project looked at liquid feeding on a sample of commercial Irish pig farms. What did this study find out there on farms? Right. In this study, we sampled uh, liquid feed on eight commercial pig units. And we conducted a, a survey on each of those units. Um, <clears throat> each of them claimed to be feeding fresh liquid feed, which would be the case on, on most Irish units. And our aim was to investigate both the microbiological quality of the feed uh, uh, that was fed to the finisher pigs and the factors which influence that quality. And we were particularly interested in things like feed system design, the feeding practices and sanitation protocols that were being used on the units. So what we found was that lactic acid bacteria counts and things like yeast counts, E. coli counts, <coughs> sample temperature increased as from the mixing tank to the feed that was being uh, consumed by the pig, I suppose. And because of this, the pH was reduced in the feed. And all of this indicated to us that there was a significant degree of spontaneous fermentation occurring in these systems between the, the mixed tank and between the time when the, the pig consumed the diet. We also found that lysine, <coughs> methionine, and threonine, these are important amino acids, and gross energy in the diet were reduced um, significantly uh, um, uh, uh, in, in, in the feed compared to what was in the, in the mixing tank. And that would indicate to you that the nutritional quality of the feed you know, has, has deteriorated from, from the mixing tank into the feed uh, or into the trough. We also looked an, at a number of units and three of the, the, the units that we were <coughs> investigating were using liquid co-products. And the co-products that were being used was pothead syrup and uh, whey. And where those products were being used, we found a reduction in E. coli and the pH and the, meat and, and the mold counts in the feed. Okay, we also looked at sanitation practices that were implemented on, on, on the units. And those sanitation practices varied quite widely as to what was involved. It could have been simple, uh, just a water rinse or maybe even just uh, cleaning the troughs or washing the troughs. But we found that those sanitation practices had no effect on microbial counts. Uh, and the results, I suppose, would indicate to us that some of the nutritional approaches, some of those liquid core products, if they're included in the liquid feed, they may have a greater influence on the microbial load in terms of reducing it uh, than the sanitation practices used on the farm. So they mightn't reduce um, all of the bacteria, but they'll reduce the deleterious or the harmful bugs. So I suppose in summary, what we found was that uncontrolled spontaneous fermentation is occurring out there on every Irish farm, even though they think they're feeding fresh feed. And you're getting a loss of, of crystalline amino acids so that you're getting, in the end, you're feeding a diet that is not balanced or it's of, of poor um, nutritional value than you thought. Part of the wet feed project compared liquid, dry and wet dry feeding. What were the results of this study? And I suppose the objective of that particular study was to compare the effect of feed farms. So you're talking about meal and pellet and delivery method. <clears throat> so liquid, uh, dry or wet dry feeding on, on um, the microbiology, uh, microbiology of the feed and the growth and the feed efficiency and carcass quality of the pigs. So in effect, what we had was six treatments. So we had meal from, from dry hoppers, meal from a wet dry feeder, meal from liquid feed system. We had pellets from dry feeders, pellets from wet dry feeders, and pellets from uh, uh, fed through the liquid feeding system. And to be honest, Amy, there's a heap of results in, in that particular study. And you know, there's a lot of information there. It's, it's a study that is going to give information to, to, to producers on which system is optimum for their type of system. But I suppose just to maybe distill down some of the results, uh, we found that to achieve the best feed, feed efficiency possible with grow finisher pigs, that you, you feed a dry uh, pelleted diet. 
So feeding it through a dry feed hopper, a pellet through a dry feed hopper was the best. If you wanted to maximize growth rate, and this is important, of course, if, if space is limiting as it is on most farms, then liquid feeding is preferable. It gives you much higher growth rates than dry feeding. I suppose what that trial told me in particular was that uh, wet dry feeding a pellet of diet achieves similar growths to liquid feeding a meal diet. And because it also optimized feed efficiency, it would, it would be my choice uh, method of feeding grow finisher pigs based on this study. But I think uh, the, the type of, or the choice of feeding system is going to be very unit specific and, and depend on a number of different factors. Okay, so there appears to be some issues with liquid feeding in terms of poor feed efficiency. Is there something that can be done to improve this side of things? There is, I suppose. And I suppose personally, and this is only a personal thing, I would only recommend to someone a liquid feed, feeding system if they have or will have at times a reliable source of liquid byproducts. Right. And if this is the case, then I would look further into improving the feed efficiency uh, um, of uh, while liquid feeding. And what you might consider, we mentioned some of this before, but fitting suitable trough dividers will prevent pigs pulling feed out of troughs. R raising troughs off, off the ground uh, with a step up, um, that will again help uh, to reduce physical wastage. Restricted feeding, as you have with long trough feeding, as opposed to ad libitum feeding on, on the short troughs, re restricted with long troughs, every pig has, has room to feed. And because of that, you can restrict those animals, maybe to 95% of ad libitum. And with that, you should be able to improve feed, feed efficiency because you have less physical losses of feed and you have less chance for the, the feed to ferment in the troughs. Another alternative might be if you're on the short troughs is to lower the sensors on, on the short trough and feed more frequently. In other words, more splits per day. And that should hopefully um, help to improve feed efficiency also as, as you have less feed residing in the, in, in the troughs for, for any period of time. And we would hope to look at all of those strategies in a new project that is due to commence uh, in October 2020. That's Wet, or that's wet Feed 2 is the name of that project. Um, I suppose the other things, and we've looked at those in, in the current project, would be optimizing water to feed ratio. That's going to help. And the addition of organic acids to diets for liquid feeding. That may be beneficial in that it may limit fermentation of the feed in the troughs. It reduces the pH and, and may limit uh, uh, bacterial growth and hence you should do away with the negative uh, consequences uh, to nutrient and um, the energy composition of the diet. So if we look at water to feed ratio, what is the optimum water to feed ratio for finisher pigs? Yeah, uh, we looked at that in, in the current in, in, in wet feed and uh, we, we actually conducted two experiments and our objective here was to, to look at uh, four commercially used water to feed ratios. And we took those water to feed ratios directly from the survey that we talked about earlier, our first uh, um, study in this project. And we fed those water to feed ratios in an ad libitum short trough liquid feeding system. And we wanted to look at growth and feed, and feed efficiency of the pigs in particular. And the water to feed ratios that we looked at were 2.4 to one, three to one, three and a half to one, and 4.1 to 1. And that was, they were on a dry matter basis. Uh, if somebody is, is working on a fresh uh, weight base or fresh matter basis, they were equivalent to 2 to 1, 2.5 to 1, 3 to 1, and 3.5 to 1. So, in the first instance, I suppose the first thing we had to do, and I know this from previous experiments or previous work in Moore Park uh, uh, on wet feeding. Oftentimes what you think you're feeding in terms of water to meal ratio can be very different from what is actually delivered to the trough. So we first wanted to verify that and we did verify it with our new system. Actually, it was quite accurate. Uh, our water to feed ratios were those that were, 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 were coming out in the troughs uh, when we did dry matters on, on the feed. So I suppose that 
first of all, gave us confidence that the results from our trial was going to be uh, fairly accurate. So with finisher pigs on a short uh, uh, sensor fed short trough liquid feeding system, um, they're most efficient and have highest growth rates and a good kill out percentage when liquid feed is provided at a water to feed ratio of three and a half to one, right? That actually surprised me. I, I would have thought it would, would have been lower than that. But anyway, if you increase that ratio to 4.1 to one, which was the highest ratio we fed, that ratio actually reduced growth rate and it negatively affected kill out percentage. In other words, it reduced the kill out percentage. If we reduced our water to feed ratio to below three and a half to one, this negatively affected our feed efficiency. Again, that, that um, surprised me a little. And it surprised me a little bit because I suppose we'd always be trying to get people to reduce their water to meal ratio. And the reason for that would be to reduce slurry volumes produced. Decreasing the water to feed ratio to 2.4 to 1 didn't reduce growth rate. So what it tells me that, you know, if we want to reduce manure volumes, um, we could feed it to 2.4 to 1, but we need to improve management and we need to be able to reduce feed wastage and improve feed efficiency further. So look at, we talked about this before, but every half um, point oh five increase in, in feed to water ratio is going to in increase manure volume produced by 10 litres per pig. So it's important that we can keep our water to meal ratios down. And if we do that, uh, to do that, we're going to have to improve management. Pater, can you tell me a little about your attempts to reduce diet fermentation using organic acids? Yeah, look, at, in the first instance, we chose an acid called benzoic acid. Benzoic, it's an antibacterial, antifungal chemical preservative. It's used in the food industry. In fact, it has an E number, it's E210. Uh, it has also been used with liquid feeding before. It has been shown to reduce the loss of some of the free amino acids or those um, artificial amino acids that are added to the pig diet in, in fermented liquid feed. And because, and, and, and it reduces that loss because it, it, it uh, reduces microbial uh, growth uh, to, to a certain extent. And for this reason, we thought that acidifying diets um, using benzoic acid would improve feed efficiency in, in finisher pigs. So what we did was we compared uh, four dietary inclusions of the benzoic acid, not uh, 2.5, 5 kilos and, and 10 kilos per ton. We looked at the microbiological quality of the liquid feed and we looked at the growth uh, and uh, feed efficiency and carcass quality of the pigs. I suppose what we found, first of all, in terms of microbial quality was that uh, there was some improvement in microbial quality of the feed when we fed the 10 kilos per ton of benzoic acid. It uh, helped to maintain pH. It, it reduced spontaneous uh, microbial fermentation to some extent. And because of that, we sort of expected that we were going to get an improvement in, in either growth rate or in particular in, in feed efficiency. However, when we looked at the data from, from the pigs, we had no improvement in, in growth rate or feed efficiency, uh, which was quite disappointing, uh, despite having got that improvement in the microbi microbiological quality of the feed. Since then, we have conducted another trial, um, and we, this time we used an acid blend, and that blend contained formic acids, acetic acid, propionic acid, and ammonium propionate. And at some inclusions of that blend, we did find increases in growth and feed efficiency in liquid fed pigs. So I suppose there is a future for diet acidification to improve performance, in particular feed efficiency uh, of liquid fed pigs. But it's important to note that your choice, you know, the acidifier or the acid that you choose is very, very important. Finally, Patter, if someone were building a new unit or refurbishing an old one, what feed system would you advise them to install? I suppose, first of all, you'd have to say there are horses for courses. And the correct choice for, it's going to be unit specific. Based on our work, if you were to take, you know, uh, what is, you know, if I was to give a recommendation in, in, in one sentence, I would recommend feeding a pelleted diet 
through a wet dry feeder because that maximizes growth and it optimizes feed efficiency, right? However, I'd also recommend liquid feeding to someone if they have a reliable source of liquid byproducts available to them. You know, so the likes of pot ale syrup, uh, currently there might be whole milk available to, to some producers. And if this was the case, then I would look further into improving the feed efficiency uh, on, on those units, trying to reduce wastage, trying to st stop that spontaneous fermentation. We've already talked a bit about uh, that, you know, uh, this afternoon already, but our next uh, project, Wet Feed 2, is going to look at this in, in, in great detail. The growth rate from liquid feeding meal, uh, liquid feeding a meal diet is much higher than with feeding a meal through hoppers or through wet dry feeders. So there's certainly still a place for liquid feeding where you're home compounding. I suppose, but we need to, and, and, and there's, there's scope for us to improve feed efficiency where we are liquid feeding those diets. And again, that is the focus, or that will be the focus of our new project, this Well Feed 2, which starts in, in October. Very good. Thanks, Pater. Thanks. Okay. That's it for the first episode of The Pig Edge, and many thanks to Pater Lawler for joining me on the show. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Spotify so you never miss a show. And for more farming information, go to chagas.ie. I'm Amy Quinn. Thanks for listening. And I'll be back in our next episode with more updates, pig farming news and advice.